How's it going guys? Preston here, Citizen Response. Got another video coming to you guys today. Today we're gonna to be talking about my new concealed carry setup. Uh, this is the P365X uh, with a few goodies on it. And obviously the standout on this is the new Trijicon RMR HD. Today I'm gonna to be explaining why I wanted to get this optic, how I got it set up on this gun at the lowest ride height possible. I've been using the P365 family of guns for quite a while now. I absolutely love them. It's my go-to for concealed carry. For basically everything, I shoot competition with this gun. I carry this gun on a daily basis, and it's really the only pistol setup that I use on a consistent basis for carry. One of the pitfalls of running the SIG 365 family of guns is the uh, choice of optics that you have to run. If you're a red dot guy, which you probably should be, most of us are at this point, um, you are limited to not a very good selection of optics on these. You have the Hollow Sun K series. Uh, some people love them. I have happened to broke to have broken a few of them, uh, so I don't really trust them for carry. Um, and the Arm RCC is extremely durable. Um, that's a great option, but the problem is you have to take it on and off and on and off, uh, mounting it, unmounting it to replace the battery, which causes you to lose zero. So you have to spend ammo rezeroing. Plus, you're also retorquing and torquing these screws. For me, it was about every two to three months because I ran it at such a high battery setting that it would just burn through batteries and eat through them like it's nothing. So I was looking for a better solution. Doing my research, following lots of different people from different spheres of tactical and competitive online, um, guy that I've been following for a while now, Brian Hartman over at PFC Training, he actually has a um, 43X, similar setup with a PMM comp, but he has a normal RMR on it, full-size RMR. And it actually sat really low. It looked, it appeared like it was sitting very low on the slide and I had not seen anything like this on the internet before. So I asked him, we had a conversation. He told me about these guys over at Mac Defense. Now what Mac Defense does is they make a cut in these subcompact guns like the 43X and the 48, for example. This allows them to use this adapter plate that I'm showing you here, kind of where the uh, RMR HD mounts. And it's a little bit wider than the slide, as you can see. Uh, that allows you to mount any Trijicon RMR footprint optic, which is very, very appealing. The reason it's very appealing is having a full-size optic comes with a lot of benefits, assuming it doesn't cause a negative to your concealment, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Some of the benefits that you're going to get from running a full-size optic is a bigger window. A uh, bigger window means you have a larger margin of error when you're uh, presenting the firearm. Uh, this isn't typically a problem when you are static facing the target uh, at the perfect position, you could pick up the dot relatively easily. The problem comes when you are trying to do this while moving from an awkward angle in a maybe high speed uh, movement uh, or presenting the pistol at a awkward, less than ideal angle can make picking up that dot a little bit more difficult. So if you have a bigger optic with a bigger window, this is gonna give you a significant advantage in being able to pick up that dot quickly. Another benefit to running full-size optics is, um, well, at least for now the RMR HD, is the top-loading removable battery. One of the pitfalls I mentioned with the RMR CC, not only the tiny window size, which can be very difficult to use for some people, is the fact that you have to take it on and off every single time. The RMR HD, when Trijicon originally announced it, was extremely appealing to me right off the bat because it had I believe it's about a 30% larger window than the traditional RMR uh, and also had a top loading battery. That to me immediately, I knew I was gonna buy it because I love the legendary reliability of Trijicon optics. I've had a great experience with Trijicon pistol optics and I knew I wanted to put one of these on a 365, but how did I go about doing that? I contacted the guys over at Mac Defense and asked if they could do their 43X48 uh, RMR adapter on a 365. I believe that this is the first P365 with a Trijicon RMR HD. There may be other people out there running this setup with an RMR or even maybe an SRO, but I believe this is the first one with the HD. Now I will say it actually rides extremely low in the slide, which is amazing. I, I didn't know what to expect. I had seen some other people running a full size um, plate on the normal cut for the macro XL, that kind of thing. And they were running an SRO, but it was way, way, way higher, right? So I, I didn't really want that, A, for aesthetics. I like the way it looks when it sits a little lower. 
and B, just uh, ease of picking up the dot. It, this, the lower it's gonna sit to the slide, the more intuitive it's gonna be. So that's why this option from Mac Defense was so appealing to me. Now, obviously it's a little expensive. This is definitely a more expensive route than your traditional um, cut and then mount, right? Because they have to use this custom plate. But for me, I really only have one pistol that I shoot and use regularly. And so I didn't mind putting uh, the few hundred dollars that I needed to invest into getting this gun to be able to run this optic. Now that I've been using it for a while, I absolutely love this setup and I cannot see myself going back to running a smaller dot. For me and the way that I carry, it conceals very well. I will say if you were running this at a three o'clock, five o'clock position, you may have some issues um, just with your body type. With my body type, I have a pretty thin, narrow torso. So the optic can print uh, a little easier than if you're running irons or a small optic but I uh, typically carry appendix most of the time, and I have not had any issues with printing with this optic more than I would with any subcompact optic. Some of the benefits of running this setup is the dot presentation as I'm picking up the dot, as I'm pushing up to full extension, it, I'm, I'm able to find it much easier. I typically didn't have too much of a problem picking up the dot because I dry fire a lot, but it's just nice to have that bigger window. Uh, when I was in the police academy, I put about 6,000 rounds through an SRO, um, which I hadn't had too much experience with an SRO before then, and I loved it. I loved uh, being able to, as I'm going target to target, right, it's a nice big window, so it's much easier to pick up the dot through movement. Uh, and if you've shot a Trijicon SRO, this is actually pretty similar. Think about if you took an SRO and made it square. So you are losing um, some of the outside ring that you would get from having a circular optic. Um, but I would still say it probably retains about 70 to 80% of the window size of the SRO, um, which is a huge benefit. And that's why the SRO is probably the most popular competitive shooting pistol optic on the market. The benefit that you get over the SRO is I believe that this optic is going to be significantly more durable than the SRO. Um, the SRO is amazing to shoot, but I know a lot of people who have had problems with theirs, randomly breaking, the glass falling out. Um, there's lots of different people you can talk to in the industry that will say the same thing. Amazing optic, but I don't personally, I would want a more durable optic for my one pistol that I own for carry and competition and all the things of the such. Now, the thing that's nice about the RMR HD is it maintains the cat ear type design that's patented by Trijicon from the RMR and just moves it on over to a um, more user-friendly platform with the removable battery uh, that you get on the HD. Um, and I personally have not done a Sage Dynamics type torture test because this cost me $700. I don't wanna beat it up and, and mar it up to be honest, but I have watched other people on YouTube beat the, the ever-living snot out of this thing. Um, and I was honestly shocked. I was appalled that it survived. I could not believe what I was seeing with my eyes. Uh, and that was a good selling point for me, knowing that this is going to have the same durability as the traditional RMR. We spent most of the time discussing the optic because it is the most important part of this build compared to any other pistol that I have ever run. Because I've been in the subcompact game for about four or five years now, and I have never run a full-size optic on them. So this is kind of uncharted waters for me. The PMM Comp is the same. I've been running these for a long, for a while now, and I absolutely love them. I think they are worth every penny that you spend if you shoot most of your rounds through a subcompact pistol. The only other real modification I've done to this is this grip work. Now, some of you guys will know who Mike Pannon at CTT Solutions is, and I saw he made a post about something similar he did to his 43X, where typically I had just used grip tape. I've been using grip tape for a few years and love it. I think it makes the grip a little fatter, which makes the gun easier to hang on to. You have more leverage, uh, makes it much more shootable, controllable, and easier to get a good presentation from the draw when you have a solid grip. Now, this modification takes it to the next level. Uh, I have it wrapped with uh, athletic tape, just normal athletic tape to get the grip about as fat as I wanted it. And then I put some bicycle inner tube over that. Now the bicycle inner tube is much more grippy and much easier to hang on to than the athletic tape. The athletic tape is good, but the bicycle um, tube wrap on top of it makes it even better. So if you're looking for a way to take your 365, and this is the stock module, I don't even have the Wilson module on this. Um, if you're looking for a way to take your stock 365 X or XL grip and make it, it doesn't affect concealability at all, I'll say that. It still conceals extremely well, but makes the grip significantly 
fatter, not only with the width, but front to back. So I have more room to lock that support hand grip in, which makes the gun in turn significantly more shootable and easier to control. If you have any questions about this setup, um, what I've done to achieve this specific build or any questions uh, relating to um, subcompact carry at all, I've answered probably thousands of questions at this point. I've um, had amazing discussions with people. You can always reach me uh, on Instagram, uh, that'll be below, as well as my email. I'm on there as frequently as I can be. Um, and I love answering questions and just, we're all learning and growing together and coming up with better ways uh, to carry better guns that are gonna do their job and going to give us the maximum firepower in the smallest, most convenient, lightest package possible. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was informative to you. Um, I appreciate all you guys who've been praying for me and my family during um, this time, tough time that we've had. Uh, it's been really uh, beautiful though. I've been able to spend so much time with my son, uh, seeing him growing every day, getting bigger and bigger, learning how to smile. Um, starting to track, man, it's just beautiful. And I just see the beauty of God's creation in him in a different way than I ever have in my whole life before. Um, and God has carried us through some really tough times recently, um, but I'm appreciative and supportive for all the people in our lives that have been uh, helping us um, make it through um, and helping us to get to the next step, get back on our feet. Um, so as always, guys, I want you to get out there, train hard, stay safe.